Absolutely, yes. And and the fact that um, suicide is also stigmatized in in this world is is a big deal. Um, my views. Sorry. We've talked about the pressure. The pressure. Yes. Yeah. So my views are is. It's a very, very stressful job and you always have to look um, nice and presentable and, and amazing. It's almost like you are in this bubble where everything has to be perfect and you have to look all the time at the standards. And certainly when you don't meet that standards, it's, it's, it's terribly stressful for the, for the girls, especially for the young um, girls and boys, right? Um, so yes. <laughs> So do you think people would be better if more people recognised it and talked about it, do you think that would be a good thing? Absolutely, yes. They also, the problem is that brands don't really recognise that there is a problem. Um, yeah. It's the same as, for example, um, other type of eating disorders within the fashion industry or the, you know, the filming industry or dancing industry. It's just is is better just to close their eyes and turn the page rather than learning how to deal with the problem right offering some type of counseling or support for these people and the problem as well is that as i said before this the stigma in, in when you speak out right when you say i do have a problem i do have an issue certain brands are likely not you know willing um to let you participate in some um, in some fashion shows, and this is so it's bad for business. It is Me definitely is bad for business. That's the views. It should not be like this, right? It shouldn't, but it's, it's this is one of the views, especially in this industry. Unfortunately, yeah. So it's bad. If you can just tell me that it is bad for business. It is, and and certainly it's bad for business. Cool. That's really Do you good. want to say, talk to me? Yeah. Well, well we've got you. Also, uh, just just give us your name. My name? Yeah. Okay. And can um, you spell it for us? Of course. It's yeah. Like, how do right. I want me to say? <laughs> just say, my, my name is, and then just spell it. So, okay. So, Sherry, okay. it's for the caption, so we make sure you get the caption. Okay, right. right. So, um, my name is Shahrazad, um, and you spell that S H E R E Z A D E, and everyone calls me Sherry. So I've done quite a lot of hair things and commercial work um, yeah it's been a really amazing journey and something I do again a hundred times. <laughs> I mean it looks very glamorous and you look a million dollars now but I'm guessing there's a there's a lot of pressure with this kind of work isn't it? Yes definitely I think because it is very image focused you're always in front of the lens there is a pressure to look your best um, and yeah that definitely does impact you probably the, the, all the time you're thinking how would I look in this pose this pose and especially with the rise of social media as well it's not just in photo shoots but off camera as well when you're in your day-to-day -day life it's infiltrating into every aspect of our lives the power of the image and do you think that has um, an effect or an impact upon mental health I think so, absolutely. I know there's been studies about it and there's definitely a correlation between seeing images and aspiring beautiful images and wanting to be that type of beauty. Girls aspire to be the girls on front of magazines or in big campaigns, so I definitely think so, yes. I think there is an issue in the fashion industry to do with mental health but primarily that's because it's not spoken enough as in general it's a, a topic that needs to be risen um, and people need to start the conversation flowing so it's great that this campaign is going in that direction and getting this voice heard which is important I've been in the fashion industry for about five, six years, on and off. And uh, I started when I moved to, uh, to London from Paris. Oh, um, and what sort of things have you done? Uh, I've done a bit of everything, to be honest. So there was a certain period when I was only doing hair because the sides of my head were shaved. There was another period when I, when I did a lot of editorials, and right now I'm doing a lot of catwalk. And uh, I'm starting to get into commercial uh, slowly as well. 
What do you enjoy most? Where would you say that your heart is? Uh, my heart, my heart is in fashion. Even if it's really, it's really tiring. But I love, I love hair as well. The, re the, 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 um, the final pictures you get from hair, hair uh, jobs, or from uh, uh, what you do during the hair show has nothing to do with catwalk shows because it's much more creative and uh, there's much more, uh, it's much more choreographed. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it looks glamorous, but it's actually really tiring and really draining. Uh, for example, uh, I've just I've just finished Fashion Week two days ago, and I'm I'm still tired. All my muscles are aching. I've got headaches. My immune system is down, and I'm I tend to get sick after Fashion Week because uh, it's it's a lot of running around and uh, not having time to eat properly or, or sit down and 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 have a rest. So yeah, it's a, it's it's glamorous on the pictures, but people don't realize how much hard work models put in. And and you know what we say in French? We say "be beautiful and shut up." <laughs> that doesn't actually work like that, you know. Um, it's not all about being beautiful. And I think uh, before doing any kind of job, especially fashion week, which is the most stressful, and that's when you get all the peer pressure from people, is that there's a lot of mental conditioning to. Uh, to be involved in and and your agency doesn't necessarily tell you that uh, it's all about yeah the conditioning and what state of mind you're at and and um, a lot of motivation is involved as well yeah so self-motivation so how do you get self how do you make sure that mentally you are in my head in my head I just um, I, I go by the cognitive dissonance is when you say something positive to your head or you repeat it or you say it out loud uh, about goals that you want to achieve. If you say it out loud and you repeat it and you, you kind of think about it every single day, um, I feel like it's some kind of law of attraction that makes you actually realize these things and those things will happen. And um, sometimes it's really hard to be optimistic because uh, of uh, this industry is all centered around uh, um, standards of beauty and rejection. So it's really tough to get back up. Uh, there's probably no one around to, to uh, help you out or to reassure you and cheer you up when you get rejected to casting. So sometimes you just need to have a good rest and forget about it and think that then the next day is gonna be amazing and, and you're, gonna, you're gonna smash it. Do you think people in the fashion industry talk enough about or recognise mental health issues? Do you think people hide them? I haven't heard. I haven't heard much about it, to be honest. I've only I've only talked to a few models. Uh, like the, you know, the really young ones, the the, the seventeen year old, the teenagers, the ones that just step into it and then they'll tell me stories about uh, what happened with certain photographers or or agents are not there to support them fully and what what should they do? They have they have no clue. So uh, I just talk to them. Uh, from my experience, what the best thing they should do, and um, I don't, I don't, I haven't heard much about mental health problems. But it's more about you, you, you mostly hear it about models themselves that come and complain to me or confine in me. Yeah.